periodically I get the question in a classroom, should I use views, should I use stored procedures, or should I use functions? And how do I know when to use each one of those? So let me just try to give you some basic guidelines for using each of these. And understand that these are my personal preferences. So my bias is going to come through. It's just inevitable. I'll try not to make it so. But a lot of the times you can use a view where you would use a function where you would use a stored procedure. And it's really up to the developer's preference. So take it with a grain of salt. Look at the way that I do it, maybe. And then go investigate the way that some of the other people out there do it, some people in your organization, uh, other sample databases that you can get your hands on. And just look and see how they do things. All right. Anyway, let me uh, go to a SQL window here. And we'll just make a query. So let's see uh, how to decide between function, view, or proc. Now, those of you that are experienced SQL developers, this is probably not that big of a choice. About the only choice you may have is function or view. Uh, those of you that are just coming into the Transact SQL development uh, world, the proc is generally not an alternative to a view or a function. The only reason that I included it is because I get that question so often. How do I know when to use one or the other? Okay. So stored procedures, let's just start here. The uh, advantages, there's just too many to list, is that it's compiled code, uh, easy to execute, even if you aren't a SQL programmer, uh, compartmentalize, uh, modularize, whatever you want to call that. A lot of very easy. Uh, it's modularized. Okay. So lots and lots of code can be deployed very easily. It's all hidden behind the name of the stored procedure. But the disadvantages cannot be used in a select statement. So you can't select from the execution of a stored procedure. I don't care if your stored procedure does this. So let's say that we have a stored procedure called get customer and you pass in the customer ID And it returns all of that data. So notice it can do a return. Right. You cannot do something like this. Select all from exec get customer um, and, and ALFKI. That's going to generate a syntax error there. So you're not allowed to do that. You cannot use a stored procedure in a select statement. Stored procedures are great by calling from the front end. Like if you have a report, go ahead and wrap all the query and all the logic inside of a stored procedure. It has parameters, really easy, but just don't query from it, okay? <laughs> so I think of, uh, I'll just give you, how, again, how I think about it. I think of stored procedures as my deployment uh, interfaces. So when I create a report or when I want to use a Visual Basic application, I interface to the database through stored procedures. I don't embed select statements in there, or I try not to. Report writing, maybe you're going to have to. But application programming, website programming, I do not embed views or functions in the applications. I will use stored procedures for that. Now, there's a lot of reasons. One of those is security, those of you that have heard about SQL injection. Uh, but other reasons are that it's very easy to execute, even if you aren't a SQL programmer. All the code I, that I write, I expect in the future to hand off to somebody who doesn't know as much about SQL as I do. So even if they're a great Visual Basic person, all I have to do is give them the name of the stored procedure, the return, uh, codes, a return type, and the parameters, and they can use that efficiently. Okay? I don't have to depend on them worrying about them doing a cross join or some bad SQL. They can only go through that stored procedure. Okay? So a stored procedure is not an alternative to a function or a view, right? It is simply an interface into the database.
So let's now talk about views versus functions. The first thing we have to do is about a function, there's two types, the single statement and the multi-statement. And there's only one type of a view, so we'll talk about the view. A view's definition is a single select statement stored in the system catalog. So like something like this, let's take away our stored procedure, create view, um, get customer detail as select all from customers. Now that's about as simple of a, a example as I can make, but now if I want to get the detail, I have to pass in this information equal and ALFKI. Okay. So you're just storing a query. That's all of you is. Okay. Now the single statement function is most similar to a view, but it can accept parameters. Okay. So we could create a function, get cust detail, pass in the customer ID, returns a table as select all from customers. And I just hate this moving me around. Uh, select all from get cost detail. If you're wondering what that N is, it's the Unicode is telling it to make sure that this is telling SQL that that is Unicode data that I'm typing in here. But you see the difference in calling the view versus calling the function? Let's say that we now had to join this to the customers table. Uh, I'm sorry, to the orders table. Right? So move out the function, move out the view. Uh, C join orders O on C dot customer ID equal O dot customer ID. And we still have to add in a little more logic. Down here, we could just join directly and focus on the join. We don't have to add in the extra where clause here. So we don't have to worry about like if this is a left join here. We don't have to worry about this being applied before the join takes place or after the join takes place in our sequence. That may not mean anything to you. Um, but I would say that the functions here prefer to use, I prefer to use functions instead of views when I have queries that need now, what would be filtering most of the time? And up here, I prefer views to tie objects together similar to dimension modeling, dimensional models. Okay. Oh, that's too deep. Let me go into the next video. I'll see you on the other side of this video.